me being so new with this content creation, it still takes me a lot of time to make these videos, so I was hoping if I actually just went through some of my Home, Ad Home Assistant dashboard that maybe you all would tell me what you want more details on or information on how I did what, where, and how. But anyway, um, let me know in the comments below. We'll go ahead and get started. This is my home screen. It's uh, pretty much just an overview of everything. You'll see I have a combination of different types of cards here. These flash just to show whether the door is locked or unlocked. So we'll go ahead and lock it. And I'm actually using Slage um, Z-Wave deadbolts here. And I'm actually using two different types of garages because I have a rental house as well. This one's a Wi-Fi garage. I think it's MyQ. And this one's just a uh, Z-Wave relay. <coughs> These are template sensors that just read the wattages or amperings, I can't remember, it's been a while, of the washer and dryer. This one's directly reading from a breaker because, you know, the three prongs and it's hard to get a um, sensor on the actual wall. The washer, on the other hand, is using a TP-Link Energy one and this one is reading watts. Um, and we'll go ahead and hit the edit dashboard here. And what this is just shows lights that are on. This one shows oh birthday sensors. This one shows fans that are on. This is my Honeywell thermostat, just a Wi-Fi thermostat. And this is the page that I have accessible to our renter so that he can turn things on or off that are related to him. This is our kitchen and dining room and pantry. And pretty simple. This one's actually pretty cool. This sensor is not really for the temperature and humidity. I actually made a video where I have a sensor that I put into the ceiling at a very specific place. That way you're only able to turn the sensor on automatically and keep it on, turn the light on via the sensor if you step in a certain place. But I also don't want people in the living room or dining room to trip it so I had to hang it in a very specific spot. These are just dimmer light switches. Our living room, as you can see, it's a mess because I have a toddler. These are uh, Casa cameras. I'm using a custom add-on that somebody had built. These are um, for our Onkyo stereo, just using the traditional media player card. This is a picture elements card that controls our Roku for most of it. And then these right here are all for the uh, Onkyo stereo. And I have a subwoofer that I have scheduled to turn off at 9.30 or 10, I can't remember at the moment, but that's whenever our toddler goes to bed. And this is just to turn on everything since it's kind of inaccessible. I have it all behind a TV and the wall. Uh, the bathrooms, the only automations I have here are, it turns off the exhaust fans after 30 minutes, I think. Um, this is just outside, this is our doghouse. And I don't really have anything that does it with the motion, I just have it in there for the hell of it. But this is for our electric fence. We have six acres that are covered. This is the script for the doghouse exhaust. So when it does turn on, which I think is once a day, it circulates the air for about five minutes and turns it off. And this is all just energy saving stuff. So I don't want my workbench to be on 24 seven because I have like my air compressor and my soldering stuff and all that. This is my office where I have a turtle tank. <laughs> my servers. Um, WLED strip is currently offline, but that's what I'm using. My uh, gun safe, I have a AOTech multi-sensor in there that whenever the door opens, you know, it sees motion, and then it, it notifies all of us that the gun safe's been open, including stuff over the um, Alexas and whatnot. Um, this is our master bedroom, same thing. These are LED strips. Um, this is our TV, which is a LG, if I remember right. This is my son's room, and we actually have these set to uh, change colors and whatnot depending on the time of day, and then it's also his night light. This is our guest bedroom, same thing. These are the WLED strips, um, another Roku, and just a, it's a random TV that's in there, but these are all Roku controls. Except for this, I do believe this turns off a Samsung TV if I remember right. This is my admin page. Um, this is mostly for testing stuff, but this is a way for me to turn off my cameras or my access points, my modem, to reboot them. It does speed tests. The system monitoring 
this is a Intel Nook that this all runs on. So this is just stuff for the Intel Nook. Um, this is just, I have my UPSs labeled up here, and this shows what's on that one and what's on this one. Um, same thing, just notes. These are program codes for the Z-Wave, and I'll blur this out obviously, but these are the OEM codes that come with it in case I end up losing them or forgetting them or whatever. Um, no, these are my cat cables that I've, I've run throughout the house. This just shows what they go to. I need to update this because there's way more now. These are just different ones that I'm testing with or was testing or doing something with at some point. And this one's the one I've spent the most time on since we moved into this house. Um, I go over it more in depth on the Emporia video, but... the uh, I'm using the Emporia view. I have two of them. And there's an awesome, awesome custom integration that somebody had built that ties them in very well. And what these are, are mathematical sensors and meters that show how much our guest house is using. And again, we rent that out. Um, this is just more for that. Um, today, this just shows what breakers have done what today. And this is the same thing, but by the month. These are all of our actual breakers, including or you can also call it a panel schedule, including what they've used and what they are, and etc. etc. Um, this is that guest house again. You can ignore these four. I'm not using these anymore. These were Z Wave ones I need to remove. And these are just individual devices that are um, not tied to it, but you can see I'm not even using either one of them at the moment. This one's been a little more fun and a little more challenging. Um, this is an SVG you know, programmable image. You can turn things on or off and see what's on or off. This is the one that I would love to play with more. This was made with uh, Sweet Home 3D and I'm using the custom um, uh, I think it's the 3D Ha floor plan if I remember right. But I always thought this one was pretty cool but I am still experimenting with it. I kinda gave up but most of this is the scale. But what I thought was so cool with this is that you can see statuses of things. So let me switch and turn something on so you can see. Let's see, let's do our front porch. I don't remember if I have that one on here. Yeah. So there, this is me experimenting with that. Now the reason why I haven't done much more with it is I'm trying to figure out how to make it to where it doesn't show. But the reason it's showing through right here is because of the windows and whatnot. So I would like to play with this more and make this a little better, but just haven't had the time. As far as security goes, these are indoor cameras. Again, using that custom CASA. And these are outdoor cameras. And these will probably take a minute to load because most of them are five megapixels are up. But, and this is just the, the traditional map integration. What I use these for are we get notifications via Alexa or whatever that says, you know, hey, mom's left work, or hey, dad's left work, or dad just got home, or dad just got to Lowe's, or dad's got home from home. And I actually have a really complicated automation here that, uh, for zoning, where I wanted to be able to automatically unlock the doors and turn on lights if it's nighttime, blah, 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 blah. But what made this one so complicated is I didn't want them to just turn on or off. Let's say your phone died and it turns on in the middle of the night where it's charging. I didn't want the garage door to just to open. Or let's say you're just running errands. I don't want the garage door to open and the doors to unlock if we're not really coming home. So a lot of things have to happen. So I work at home, but let's use my fiance as an example. Let's say that she's at work, right? And it says that she left work. I don't want it to wait five minutes and turn on the, um, open the doors and whatnot if she's not actually coming home. So I have it set up to where it has to pass specific things in a specific order within a certain amount of time in order for those to actually turn on and unlock and do whatever. <clears throat> and because, you know, you're probably going to be like, well, why don't you just do it only if you're getting home? Well, our house is actually on a main road, so what if we were passing our house? That's why. But I can go more into that later if you actually wanted me to. And of course, these are the traditional logbook and history. I don't really use them that much, but Studio Code Server is the coolest thing ever. I've always used it 
the desktop version, but this just makes it way better having it built in here already. But as you can see, I uh, this energy one's definitely done the most. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is uh, pretty much a quick overview of it. Let me know if there's anything additionally you'd like me to show, and we can do that. Here's some of the integrations I use. There's that MyQ for that garage door. The Rokus, which I don't really use. I use the shell commands to control them. Uh, TP-Link, I love the energy monitoring ones, but they don't make them anymore. Um, Z-Wave Network, uh, I love these UPS add-ons. Um, I do certain things like tell things to shut down at certain times, or as soon as it detects that the input voltage has gone to zero and it lasts more than five seconds, it to preserve power, I tell it to shut off um, certain things. But I want certain things to stay on, like our security systems and whatnot. So as an example, I tell it to turn off my NVR, but it leaves my cameras on. And I do that because they're also recording to a local SD card. So the power consuming NVR is off, but I'm still recording via the NVR. I mean, I'm sorry, via the SD card on the actual camera itself. But these are really neat little add-ons. I'm pretty sure I made a video about these. Um, I haven't really played with the Bluetooth thing very much. I do love the Honeywell thing. It's very stable. I haven't really had any issues out of it. It's probably one of the first smart devices I ever had. I haven't really found a unique way to use this yet. Um, I just don't print enough to make it worth it. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for these. But let's see what else we got. Uh, we can look at these if we want. Most of these are very simple. Um, the GPS ones, of course, very complicated because I wanted to make sure we weren't accidentally opening and unlocking things. But, yeah. That's uh, pretty much it for those. I don't really use the scenes as far as scripts go. They're very simple. Um, this is just to turn the turtle tank light from on to purple at night. Um, I'm trying to think. These blueprints are pretty cool, but I never really got into them. Let's see here. I love the Home Assistant Cloud. I use it a lot for, um, of course, controlling devices via the Alexa. Let's see here. Oh, no, that's not what I want to click on. But that's pretty much it for this. Let's see here. Of course, you got people and you got system stuff and all the traditional stuff that goes with that. But um, I think that's about it. Please let me know if there's anything in particular you want me to go over more depth, and I will. Have a good day. Thanks.